Alrighty, welcome to episode 102 of uh, Music Real Talk with Marvin. Uh, remember how we told you we're going to bring you high quality content? Not today. Uh, so yeah, we're doing it from the car after sun. a game. It's going to be sun. At the Four Seasons Hotel. Um, man, I got to say, if I was younger, it would have bothered me, this... Uh, this whole situation with gigs. I, I enjoy playing jazz. And uh, it's like the Mitch Hedberg joke that like I tattoo an audience having a better time on the back of my eyelids. Uh, <laughs> but uh, my God, the state, the state of gigging is just, it's so sad. It's like every time I play a jazz gig, I can't not think about like, like, who would it take to be in front of these people to get a reaction? Like, if, if instead of, like, me and Danny, if it was, like, Cannonball and West Montgomery, would they just crush it at Adorn at the Foreign Season <laughs> where people, like, are inhaling shitty steak? We had a steak that cost $130. Steak for two for $130. We didn't pay for it, of course. Uh, and it was terrible. It was like bad $130 steak. The food was so far is really disappointing. I'm going to end up getting a burger at the end. Yeah, but, I mean, but I'm saying there is something poetically beautiful about a shitty $130 steak. Yeah, but I was telling you, but it's amazing how, like I would rather have, I bought the specific tacos that we had, like mediocre tacos in a lot of places. Than this. But like, it makes it's, perfect it's, it's sense like that the kind of people that would pay a hundred and thirty dollars for bad steak would be, would would pay six hundred dollars to bring a jazz duo and ignore them. It's just it's the same people. It's like it's totally and they don't want to make a bad steak. They're just shitty at everything. So they just make bad steak. Like they have all the ingredients for a great time. They they bought a cut of meat that cost it's probably eighty dollars. But they just have such shit people that they can turn an eighty dollar steak to upsell it to a hundred and thirty dollar steak, make it taste like a ten dollar steak well, up, and up, then find people to buy it. Upscale stuff is a lot of times we get confused by what tastes good, you know what I mean? But I mean that's ex- that's exactly the point. It's you are when you're talking about fine taste, like you can't go in Chicago and get a hundred and thirty dollar steak that tastes like a hundred and thirty dollar steak in many places where they hire talented cooks. But the problem with like a lot of places is that they have things that are like the good things. They yeah. look like the good things. The room looks like the good room. But doesn't look like the good room. They try. They didn't make that. E- they they didn't succeed there either. It's it's very it's shitty. An hotel. It's very strange. Yeah, it's a very it's a very shitty uh, thing. Anyway, so the other day, my wife and I went with like a friend of my wife's to lunch, and uh, she's like a fat girl, she's a big girl, and we ordered the same thing. We we all ordered uh, flatbreads with like lobster. Something on it, like it's like it's like chunks of lobster and potato. Yeah, that sounds good. And it was very tasty. Fat girl did not eat any of the bread. She just ate the toppings, and I left nothing on the plate. Yeah, you know and this right. is like a note to fat people. It's a pet peeve of mine. I've seen this many times. Please stop doing that. We know. We know what you eat. What I'm saying. I'm saying like, how about you just eat the bread? And if you want to diet, just don't eat the thing you're going to eat at home, like, hiding in your closet. Like, don't eat the cake. Don't eat the fu- Don't drink the gallon of orange juice. Like, eat the fucking bread. Because you know? what, it, what it does to normal people when we're having lunch <laughs> with you is it makes us... It's very disorienting. It makes us feel like all the calories are, are like, in the, to- in the bread... And like none of the calories are in the topping, 
or so, or something reverse is happening. Like that, like there's something crazy happening, or that all the calories are in the toppings, and you've just become obese by eating toppings, and then we go home and just eat like go on a bread diet. It's very fucked up. It's a very bad feeling for for the people, for the skinny fat people in care. your life. Yeah, I don't care. And for me, it's it's very disorienting. I couldn't stop thinking about I just that. Just feel bad for these people because. What are you just, doing? You want the bread? Man, just eat it. Huh? Just eat it. Like, you know, like you look like that, so you've earned the right to no, be the person not, that eats all the bread. It's just, you know, I, well, you know, the way I do it, it's just I don't, although it's fine to fracture it a little bit, right? You don't want to fracture too much a little bit. And then, especially when you're our age, and it's like, dude, you're out, you, you eat. Like, no, yeah, I'm saying like... Time. It's not like, you know, I don't buy cake, but if I go and somebody has cake, I'm going to eat fucking cake. Do you know what I mean? That's... No, I don't agree. Because if you're going to diet, why are you ordering it on bread? Just order a fucking salad and eat the whole thing. Well, it depends on how much you go out. If you go out every day, then yeah, but it's like if you don't, just, you know, you have to live life. Just saying. No. Don't have your life revolve around your diet. If you want to eat healthy, order something healthy. If you're gonna order, especially if you're gonna order the same thing. I don't know, the fattest I was was two years ago, I was 183. I wasn't really fat. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like my system is pretty good. You got a, you got a good system. It's like you have to live your life, you can't be obsessed about it, you can't be around it all the time. But like at home, you buy, you just don't buy shit to put in your home. Like if I have ice cream at home, I would eat ice cream, but I don't have ice cream at home. You know what I mean? It's good not to have ice cream. I just have stuff that's pretty good for you. I had, um, usually have an 88% dark chocolate, which is good, but we didn't have it in Whole Foods, so I got 100% chocolate. Just that like, sucks, man. That's 12, like eating a fucking piece of shit. 12%. Is yeah, they make difference. a big difference. <laughs> yeah, they market it as 12%. It feels like it's more. Well, it's it's tasty. Yeah. Oh, it tastes like shit. Yeah. Anyway, you know what I was thinking? What? You know how they have, because, because fat people, you were saying? You know how they have these pictures? I saw one recently. But they had it like 20 years ago already, or 30 years ago, of what Americans are gonna look like in the future. Uh huh. And then it's always like this mixed race, like eighth Mexican, quarter German, half black, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. This beautiful person. And I was thinking today, it is like, we're always skinny. It's like, it doesn't look like an American. It looks like, like the prey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the prey? Yeah. What, an American's gonna eat in yeah, 30 years? Like, like, American's gonna eat him? We're gonna eat him? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. yes. uh, yeah it's, it's, we've gotten to a bad place. Uh, Tim Dillon is just so the man on this. Like when he's talking about like, uh, did, you, did you see him talk about healthcare? No, well, I didn't. Oh, dude, come over and send to me. Yeah, when he's talking about like uh, the future of of healthcare, about universal health healthcare, he's like, at a certain point, we're gonna have to tell people like, don't eat that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, like it's like pull up like a Carl Jr. burger. It's like pulling out like a quadru like four hamburger slices <laughs> and like cheese. It's like things like four thousand calories. It's like we need to make that illegal. We need to have the police come there and like, with batons and just beat everybody who orders it up. <laughs> it's so good. It's great to hear a fat man say it too. Is it time to be less fat or no? Um, for a while he was like keto, but I mean. He, he always says that he's, he's that he's like he's not like fast food fat. He's uh, steakhouse fat. And it's a different kind of people, but like skinny people can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, he's, he's the best man. He's, he's really the best. Anyways, yeah, yeah. Go listen to his podcast. Oh, definitely listen to his podcast. He's funny. The funny boy. Oh, we don't need to listen to this podcast. Only to uh, some clips of surface. It's hard to listen. I, I mean, I, okay. So I'm a recovering podcast holic. Like I, I said, Danny. Like I, I feel like I'm uh, like those dudes in AA that show up with like the first like chip. Like I've been sober for 22 yeah, hours. Yeah, to give him updates. Yeah, and I call Danny to like let me know what happened in the podcast. But I just the funniest thing is that I was listening to Louis on Rogan. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he was talking about how he doesn't have like any apps on his yeah, phone. Yeah, but that's what we talk about all the time on our podcast too. Louis really said a lot of stuff that we say all the yeah. time. And I was just like, you know, having a baby, teaching a lot, like doing like a lot of gigs lately. I was just like, I, you know, started going to the gym and I'm like, man, like, why don't I have any time? Like, why do I have zero time? And I was like, where is the, where is, if I had free time, where would it be? And I just realized that I have these pockets. I'm not doing nothing. Like, I'm like driving you're or something. You're driving or you're waiting in line. Or waiting in line or feeding baby or like just doing something like, you know, walking in the park when the baby's asleep or something like that. And it's like, I couldn't do, I couldn't practice guitar or do something like that. So I always fill up everything with podcasts. But then I realized that I don't have any time to think my own thoughts. I've been it's, saying it for like 10 years already. I know, but like, it's the first time I took some action about it. I know. Uh, to be bored. Do you it know, it's like, I mind. don't actually get bored, so. Ah, you don't do it enough. What? You didn't do it, yeah. You didn't do it enough. It's true, but I, I just... It's very nice. I told you, it's healthy to get bored. To not fill up all the empty space with talk. Like, also, I listen to so much, like, um, political talk that it's, like, really nice to actually sink into the world from the perspective in which I actually interact with it. Yeah, here we um, can't agree, because I told you. You made, you, made, you made it in the world right now. It's no, 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 I'm okay with that. Whatever I meet in the world is okay. I'm not saying that you should bury your head in the sand, too. I'm... I'm I'm off it for like four days, so I still know what's going on. I haven't missed any... Well, I also keep and, you updated. Yeah, I haven't missed any key moments. All I'm saying is that I've been living almost mostly in a world that's not related to my own uh, or is loosely related to my own. My, I see enough fucked up shit in my own world. I'm not, I'm, you know. It is pretty amazing to me how... You know, how the level went down in everything which is so funny because I feel like people the narrative is that the level went up the level you know with all the podcasts and all the stuff like we have quality content mm-hmm. but it's not true it's like I just remember stuff I used to read in the papers you know we used to make books out of all things after a while do you know what I mean like they would have somebody write a weekly a weekly um, editorial, mm-hmm. and then they'll have a book of the editorials with person right because it was serious writers. Yeah, no, it's it's hard in, in the world of content. They call it evergreen content. Um, you know, stuff that maintains its relevance through the years. That's actually informative. That has something uh, didactic about it that you can always come back and learn something from. You know, like. Uh, a good example like it's like how to tie a tie video the ones with like a hundred you know whatever like 600 million views um they have these they they, they've made these things that are like very convenient to have online but they've made so much garbage it's just like the latest most contemporary thing and uh yeah i mean it's it's uh the level is certainly I mean, the th- I had my mind blown this week because we're, we're, I'm setting up to start making like high-end content like with nice cameras. You know, I have a guy that's going to do the video editing. Mason from Vertex Effects is like helping me put it together uh, just conceptually. But, you know, we know from... Uh, what's it? Not Elon Musk, but the g- Lex... Luther. Lex Luther. Lex Feldman. Uh, Friedman. He was, Isn't uh, it? I don't know. I think, I think Something. It's felt. Lex Jewman. Jew yeah. That Lex AI guy uh, from the podcast. Feldman, I think. But uh, it talks too slow for me. Yeah. He was saying that uh, the way like the algorithm works on YouTube is uh, the title is basically everything. And everything else is very secondary. <coughs> but Mason blew my mind that he told me that every video they make, they spend an hour on the title through this... They have a website, which is like a search engine where you feed it the title and it's telling you in percentages, like it's its success rate. 
and it's like dead accurate all the time. You know, it's uh, top three ways to find, you know, bang your sister, whatever. Um, but it's all like, uh, you know, the most you dial in the words that kind of have have it maintained. But it it turns everything into tabloid because that's what works. Yeah, you know, it's like you want to grab immediate attention, but inevitably we're going to have to like do the most you know what's the thing the cheapest thing when people talk about I guess it's not exactly the same but people talk about the, the stupid metaverse mm-hmm. and yeah it's it's idiotic beyond belief mm-hmm. I believe it's like it's it's horrible and if you look at it like what you're gonna go shop in Walmart you pick up the thing and you put it in the car yeah it's stupid right and you have meetings there it's, it's terrible but the thing that you have to remember about all the, all this shit is that it starts always as mimicking real life and then it changes to something that makes sense for the platform and then real life starts imitating it. Yeah. So it's not going to imitate real life for, for long. Yeah. Like Facebook has nothing to do. The way people engage in Facebook and Twitter and all this shit has nothing to do with... Uh, with real life yeah. and how people interact in real life anymore absolutely so but but now real life it's just you know took took a back seat it's like the thing that uh, sorry Ian was telling me I was talking to Ian today he was saying how we repeat stuff and I explained to him how I also talk to you a lot on the phone so I don't know why so what, what I said on the podcast uh-huh. and I said that but you say we repeat stuff on the podcast yeah well, I know we do fuck that guy I never, um, I never repeated anything. But I'm fascinating every time. The like, thing of like it's you, the first you time see the world heard. through. If you're Instagram, you see the world through what would make a good Instagram picture. Mm-hmm. And when you go hiking, you're like, oh, that would be a good picture. Mm-hmm. You know, so it changes. That's the, way the story you. of my life. My, 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 my wife literally lives for to get like. Anytime we go out, if there's not, like, there wouldn't be a plan if there wasn't a picture opportunity, like buried in the plan somewhere. Yeah, her secret is. And it's like she knows, phone. she knows I'm on to her, so now she just confesses it before the plan starts. Just don't take your phone. What do you mean? Just leave your phone in the car. No, no. Or at home. Then, then there wouldn't be a plan. There'd be no point. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's completely. That's like. I'm saying that's a way to fight it. Just don't take your phone. I'm not fighting it. No, for her. She doesn't want to fight it. Why would you fight it? You don't take pictures. You just go on Google Images. That's true. Somebody already took a picture. I, it's, I mean, I've done it every at every intersection. I think it's the smartest thing to do. Yeah. Somebody, yeah, some, somebody with an amazing camera. Yeah, but it's it better. For free. You're, you're over taking pictures. And yeah. you, are, you got some of the best. I know. Yeah. I know. Look at me. It was free. Yeah. I can get sued, but so what? Get sued. Yeah. Oh, you know what I just saw? What? I forgot to tell you. This guy in Wawatosa, which is a suburb of Milwaukee, um, like just by Milwaukee, it's the next suburb of the West, and um, got sued by ASCAP right now. Really? For a ton of money. I thought ASCAP is done suing people. And it's like, you're suing this guy every coffee shop we've been to. I ask them what music we're playing, and it's all the barista's private Spotify account. How is he getting sued? Ask what him to sign him. What did he do? Played, played Spotify? Played music. I don't know what he did. Didn't read he must have played I Pandora. Skimmed it. Skimmed it. Something. <laughs> he played something. But not Spotify. I know that because every fucking coffee shop plays Spotify. That is so fucked up. And people in the comments are like, oh, yeah, you should, yeah, you should totally use people's stuff for free. It's like, uh, yeah, no, I'm, we're gonna, everybody's going to get so much money out of it. All the musicians, it's gonna save the music industry. We're gonna save the music industry one destroying one bar at a time. The only thing it's saving is ASCAP jobs. Yeah. How weird is that? That um you know like parking tickets with after that it gets to a point where all you're doing is you pain yourself and everybody around you. Do you get what I'm saying? And the people that actually Give the tickets. Like, there is a point, yeah. Like, there is a point in it, right? 
but the point is long gone and now all you do is you finance the system that gives the tickets. Yeah, it's the that's, same. that's a swollen administration on every... Yeah, it's the same thing with uh, you know, the IRS. I don't remember, yeah. like 30% or 40% of what they take goes back to the IRS. Yeah, well, now more because they've just well, enhanced it. Well, they have to get guns for everybody, but yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. So, yeah, it's pretty fucking crazy. So I'm saying with ASCAP, it's like what ASCAP is doing. It's doing nothing for people like us. But doing nothing for anybody. Imagine if it's just doing stuff for ASCAP. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's really an incredible time for pirates, for music pirates. Um, it's called, oh, Ian. Ian will complain because Ian is talking to... So he started a graduate, a graduate program. In music. My master's. And he's doing it for free and he has to teach because of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, like what's he teaching? Just bass? I don't know. Mentoring some fucking undergrads or whatever. Okay. I don't know what it means. And um, he feels bad about it, probably because he heard my rants about how immoral it is. Yeah. To do that, and he's like, "Oh, I should tell him the truth." And I was like, "I should tell him the sliver of the truth that uh, that won't get you fired." You should tell out. himself the truth. He's doing a master's degree. He didn't hear anything. Uh, he is not paying at least, just yeah. with his time and life. But, you know, it's fine. He wanted to go back closer to New York. It gave him a good, a good excuse. Again, I wouldn't do it. I'm just saying. Right? Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know. It's, uh... Yeah, I mean, now you've been trying to look for stuff for the music. A degree is very, uh... seems very crucial if you're trying to teach. You probably need, like, a doctorate. Yeah, you do, you do need a PhD. Yeah. But I would rather... I, the amount of money you get for those jobs is fucking nothing. If I go out, if I'm gonna go for school, I'm right. just like fuck music for real. It's like uh, I'm not gonna go to be uh, to steal to steal money from poor fucks that wanna go to music college in Kansas and gonna get a hundred thousand dollars. I'm gonna work on the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, but, but what I was telling Ian, I'm not gonna ruin the life of musicians. I'm gonna ruin the lives of everybody. But that's literally what I was telling. Yeah, but but that's literally well to me that's worse because I actually care about music. Yeah. Um, and I was telling Ian about it. I was like, listen, if you think about it, right now in the states, most jobs are like you're a piece of shit, it's like for doing them, like all the tech jobs. It's like what you're doing, getting people hooked up on computers and shit like that. I know gambling, porn, um, Facebook, whatever. Like the biggest company, Google, Facebook, because Google is YouTube. Facebook is all this shit. Instagram. It's like you're doing terrible things. Right. That's all those jobs. Um, you know, if you're a doctor, you know what you do. Some of them. Uh, it's like doctors, lawyers. It's like whatever it is. Giving parking tickets, working for the CIA, FBI, UPA, DIA, DEA, IRS. All this shit. It's like. Most job, I feel like most jobs at this point, you'll be in a piece of shit, you know. In China, it's not the case. They're making, they're making some shit for us, like it's a nonstick pen. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you, you need that shit. You need to go gags. Dude, I actually got a non. I had, a, I, I bought like a for our wedding. We got a like reset set, and they just in France. I don't think they understand the technology of making shit not stick because it's <laughs> like. Man, every time you cooked an egg, it was like an hour of fucking no, no, torture. I'm with it. They, they, yeah, it's not as good as his. Dude, it sucked. And then, like, I bought this Costco pen, and like, I'm fucking flipping yeah. omelets. Like, nothing can stick to that shit. These Chinese people are a bunch of fucking geniuses when it comes to Teflon. Well, they also you think they actually manufacture the other thing in France? No, they don't. No, but, they're also in China. Yeah, but that factory. Whatever, whatever. The slave, the slave, the slave. Whatever the child the Uyghurs, labor, that, the Uyghurs, yeah. the slave labor. Yeah, the, the, the Uyghur that made it definitely knows how to make shit not sticky, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate you, Uyghur. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. <laughs> but it's um, you know, they do stuff that's good. Yeah, real good. And I was like, well, most people here, what do they do? It's really terrible shit. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I've been uh, educating. Some guitar students and... Uh, so most people. Yeah. Oh, we in Melbourne, we did great stuff. Trust me. Agreed. Agreed. It's weird. So when are we making this new album? Never. Never? No? I'm going to make it. I think, I think it could be badass. No? No. We don't have money. I don't have money. Yeah. Well, we're getting that grant. Maybe we'll get another grant yeah, for the gun. recording. Yeah, the grant to go to us. Everyone yeah. get another gun, I'm sure. 
Yeah. They already promised John and everyone to jump over there. Yeah. So that was a mistake. We shouldn't. shouldn't. No, that I was told a, you not to tell them. That was a part of the grant. We have to, sh- we have to actually show them. Oh, really? I have to give them receipts. Oh shit! Yeah, you gotta pay. No, no, John, I know because I made a deal with him. No, it's not even a deal. It's like you got it. That was written into the grant. Yeah, if he's gonna take out a receipt, he's gonna that, show it on his tax return. That's uh. He's gonna talk to his accountant. Yeah, well, I'll talk to his accountant about that. Does he do his taxes? I don't think he's ever done. I mean, I, I know a lot of people. Uh, in music that I don't think I've ever like name that, one Ben yeah I, I know a few that like I think just the whole process it would be mystifying to them if I explained to them how it works to do your taxes but you have to pay taxes still yeah that's like you have to like report your taxes even if you're not paying you have to do your tax return you do unless you make under a certain amount yeah yeah, yeah it just it would, I, I could really blow minds with that Well, we kept telling Ben about it. Mm-hmm. He's really worried about becoming rich now. Really? Yeah. Well, wow. now he's worried he's not going to become rich. Well, that is worrisome. I mean, there are a lot of things Mr. Ben has to worry about. Yeah, it's funny. Like, we were talking about the fact that uh, we know... Now, we now know a guy that fell... For the hard left and a guy that fell for the hard right, and we all uh and we we produce both their music, and if they collaborate, they can make the funniest songs, yeah, <laughs> like black lives matter, white power, <laughs> like together, like ev racist ebony and racist ivory, yeah, <laughs> live together in perfect disharmony, yeah, just like. <laughs> That's just like the guy that he's working with now, which is like, the Jews did it. Yeah. And, then, and then Ben is like, they happen to be Jewish. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he's like working with a guy who's like a full-blown Nazi, and Ben's like, no, some, some of the Jews are really cool. No, they just happen to be Jewish, you know, not all of them are Jewish. And not all the Jews are that. It's like, great. Uh, it, it's, yeah, it, it's very fun. Uh, American, American Nazis are just... I can't take him seriously. I just feel like they're, they're like they're so half baked like Nazi Nazis at least had like a world view that was like you know they explained to you why they hate Jews, why we're like an inferior race, and you know I mean, I don't believe that obviously, but like I could see where they're coming from they it's very it's put together they're like nietzsche they like they like they they've they have like the whole thing about like You know morality in nature, like is the lion guilty for eating the gazelle like there's no morality it's like yeah, they have they have this thing worked out, but like you know these guys here is just like the Rockefellers it's like what I don't know Rockefellers not Jewish no not the Rockefellers the Rothschilds. Rothschilds. yeah the Rothschilds. It's like Rockefeller sounds Jewish they're lizards they're like what they're interdimensional beings. No, it's like okay well it's like are they practicing Torah in the different dimension like what's how's this relate it's like are they aliens it's it's all it's all jumbled together it's very very difficult to make sense of it yeah it's very weird but uh you know yeah well, where are we going about yeah I just find fine to me but uh, the way it defends us. To that guy and you know he defends us to that guy yeah yeah he's like no some of the Jews are really no, no, cool no no they just happen to be Jewish and then it's just like oh watch out it's like yeah but not all of them are like yeah, all like, like yeah, uh, Vanderbilt and stuff <laughs> there are other ones that are bad too it's very funny he made a he made a song about uh, this is Bad Ben he made a song about CNN um, first verse the first joke is about Anderson Cooper being in a Vanderbilt and I was like what the fuck is a What's Vanderbilt the fu- yeah. isn't the university or it's something like, it's like all like inside jokes for people who listen to Alex Jones so like I had I had to have like seven of them explained to me yeah I asked him I asked him and he was like oh it's like if you, if you listen to Alex Jones but I played like, guitar on the thing and I guess it's going like oh, it might go as like the theme song for one of the shows there I don't I can't see it I, it's too long it's also so strange yeah we'll see I don't know. I think, I think it might it's happen. It's about CNN anchors and three out of the four that he mentioned no <laughs> got longer fired got, already. No longer work for CNN. It's pretty epic. I mean, their turnover 
right really makes it uh very difficult to you know write a song about in a reasonable amount of time fuck you george bush senior <laughs> what a terrible president <laughs> yeah yes it loses its relevance pretty yeah, quick oh, dude. it's really dude yeah got people, good. the people that live back then it's really relevant mm-hmm. like they still remember because what they told me when a band i i, I told them it's like all of them were fired and it's like yeah but people will remember oh i don't remember who was there before them yeah <laughs> like who'd they replace I no idea no clue no clue i mean i never i mean yeah i i not an avid CNN watcher, I must admit. All right, my computer's going to die in a minute, so we probably should need to wrap it up. It's a shorty, uh, 30 minutes, shorty right, cool. but goody. All right, see you guys next time, and uh, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.